with no cold calling. A world where companies don't sell your data to other companies who want to pester you. At G4 Claims, we don't cold call and we don't buy a single lead from data companies. Oh, and if you're due any compensation from your car accident, you pay nothing to us at all. For full accident management support, including motor replacement, repairs and personal injury compensation claims, just search G4 Claims today for help the way you want it. Hi folks and welcome to the Battle for Your Podcast. My name's Scott Gray. Um, we're revisiting our famous fan series today um, and I'm delighted to say that we have River City legend stalwart um, Stephen Purden on. How we doing mate? All good, mate. When you said you're, then you're, you're visiting your famous fans, man, you're like, so you couldn't get MD, so you hope me. <laughs> not at all, mate, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, we've seen you on Mrs. Ibrooks, um, obviously, day football daft, mate, so you're Aye. no stranger to the, the podcast scene either, to be fair. Aye, mate, it's kind of, it's one of the ones, though, I never, I was never into podcasts until I started football daft, and I was talking to Big Grado earlier on, and we are doing like a wee football daft thing later on as well, and I says, can we push your time back a wee bit, because I'm doing a podcast with yourself, and he's like, ah, you in these fucking podcasts, man, that's all you do now, I'm like, ah, mate, I know, I don't know, I was never into them, but now I'm like, obsessed with them, you know what I mean, so, it's a way forward, I little podcasts. Well, the only reason I managed to get Grado on this one, on our live show, The Bears Corner, is because yeah. I messaged him after an old film game, and he was pushed, and... Oh, he decided, he, he said, I'll do it, and then he had to commit to it, and he's like, I, I wouldn't have let you do it, mate, I'll just do it. <laughs> mate, he's, he's murdered, he's one of my best pals, and even I need to book him like three months in advance to make sure he's doing something, <laughs> honestly, and I remember the night he was doing it, and he actually, I was, I think I was having a few beers that night, and he texts me going, oh, he still calls me Bob, he's never called me Steve in his life, so he's uh-huh. like, ah, Bob, I'm doing this live thing, blah, 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 right, how would you, how would you, if you were talking about Rangers this season, how would you sum them up? What words would you use? How did we play in this game? What did we do in that game? Ah, mate. Yeah, grab you know what you're saying. <laughs> no, he's, done, that's man. he's done. He's done. So right, hey, Co- Coach Strap had given me a lot of information on it beforehand, and it, we just spooked him straight away because I was like, ah, "You've done Nana Snook is tight, not this." And he's like, ah, "How the fuck do you know this?" You know, what I mean? it, was, it was brilliant, man. I've no got that today, mate. I should say. I've no <laughs> that's <got> that. <laughs> No, he's a good laugh, he's a good boy, man. He's 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 always he's cracking value if you're getting him on any sort of podcast because right. you just don't know where he's gonna go and he gets after a tangent one way and another all the time. So it's great, man. Aye. Obviously here you talk about your sale and being a Rangers supporter and Aye. obviously part of River City, a huge part of River City, um, and becoming what it's obviously became the day. But the thing is, I've always wondered because I, I Everybody knows me knows that I watch River City anyway, right? So, excellent, mate. Excellent. Is it a is it a thing in River City that the 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 character that you play is you've you've always got to the characters always got to support the opposite for what you support in real life? Because I remember <laughs> the guy that plays Raymond. I remember him. De- I remember him doing a scene with his dad George in it, and he says, "I've not seen a smile in your face." That wide since the jail's done nine in a row, and then you find out he's actually a Celtic fan, and I know your character in it as a Celtic fan. So is that what happens? <laughs> well, mate, you would. Uh, now that you're saying it like that, I'm starting to think maybe it is how it happens, and nobody's told me. No, I mean, but uh, it's it's it goes back to oh years ago when I so I've, I've been in there since the beginning, mate. So I've been there twenty years next year, so nineteen years now. I so uh, one of the my good friends, uh, Mark McCarthy, his name is, but he's a He's now my boss. He's like mm-hmm. the executive producer at River City, but he's also, he was a writer as well. He was an actor. But he used to write a lot of the episodes. And I remember, I think one scene in particular, one storyline in particular, I had, I think I had fucking ended up. <laughs> my character back in the day had a one night stand with my best mate's more, with Deke's more. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> basically pumped my best mate's more. Do you know what I mean? So it was kind of. How'd you do? And he, he, aye, and he, he wasn't his character wasn't the best pleased with my character. So he punched me he punched me and I fell down the stairs and ended up in a coma, right? So the only way when I was in the coma, they thought it would be good to go right, because my family, the Adams they were called then, they're called the Haras now. Oh man, it's mental right, soap man. But 
they thought very religious family, so they put rosary beads on my bed while I was in the coma, and they put a Celtic scarf and all that, and that was written by my mate Mark McCarthy, who is a big Celtic fan, and knew <laughs> I was a big Rangers fan, so it stuck <laughs> since then. Do you know what I mean? So that was it. So I, I'm, I've had so many lines where I'm talking about the King of Kings, Henry Larson, <laughs> saying all that. So it's. So I remember years ago when I first, when never City started, and I started going to the games. I remember walking to sit in my seat when I used to sit in the govern and I'm walking to my seat and this guy stood there, pure right, hardy looking guy, and he's like, ah, You in the wrong fucking stadium, son. <laughs> and I was like, What? At this point, I wasn't used to anybody noticing me. And I was like, What? He's like, You're one of that mob, you know? And I was like, Oh, mate, no, mate, it's no real, mate. I'm a Rangers, man. Do you know what I mean? So it's all that kind of stuff. But I can't wait to fall for it. For it. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, I know. Mate, honestly, when you're in River City, man, like, People forget you're actually just, they're so, like, people who love River City, like, especially the older ones, they're pure like, you are Bob and that's <laughs> Damon and that's, you're no Steven, you're fucking shell suit Bob and that's it. You know what I mean? So it's brilliant, man. I suppose that's a, that's probably a Scottish thing, but isn't it? That, 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 that's you, aye. you're just stuck with aye. that and that's you. Aye. You never shake aye. that off. Mate, I know, and that's the thing, man, I'm, I'm 38 now, I started there when I was 19, man, so it's like, I've grew up, on the terry and being part right. of it, so I love it all, mate. Do you know what I mean? So that's kind of it's been good to me. You know what I mean? All right. When when did you? Who who was your like, kind of biggest influence in, in being a Ranger supporter? And obviously, real life in your personal aye. life. It's aye, it's going with my dad. Do you know what I mean? My dad was always he was I massive like <laughs> mental mad Rangers fan. Uh, he used to when I was younger take me to the games and that and. Uh, I think it, it was just, without sounding like the old cliche and the old cheesy way, mate, I think kind of in your blood a wee bit, do you know what I mean? It's in your DNA, it's kind of, that's the way my dad's dad was, my dad's brother, my uncle and all that, they're all just, it's, my dad's side especially, my mom's side or the other way, they're all Celtic fans and that, but my dad's side is Rangers fans and I, my mom still says to this daily, like, I've got his temper, his everything when it comes to Rangers and it's like, I, it's just, my dad, mate. So just through that, then just snowball got to the games and that. Do you know what I mean? So, and it's something as well. I think that when you do start going to the games, mate, and you start to invest your own money in it in terms of season tickets and strips and shirts and, and whatever else you buy. You know, there's hundreds of stuff. I mean, twenty five quid maybe your forty ten with a trophy. Yeah, for the trophy, mate. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, think it just does yeah, snowball. Aye, and I know what the club are doing, right? I know there's so many people out there that are going, "Fuck that! I'm not paying that. I'm not doing that." They're just taking the James Bond out, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> did, you, did, did you book it, but mate? Aye, well, I had to do that. You're like, what's going on in it? If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Don't if you want it. to do it, do it. So I can, I can see both sides of the argument where, I mean, I play the Rangers lottery, I pay my season ticket, I've got my Rangers TV, I'll buy the strips for me, I'll buy the strips for my boy. It is a lot of money, but if you can't do it and you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you can exactly. do it and you're going to do it, don't fucking then moan about doing it because you're doing it. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So it's, fuck exactly. mate, I can see, I mean, I can understand it does eat into your pocket and stuff and we've all got families and bills to pay. But at the end of the day, look where the club's been and look where the club is now. See these, been able to get shares and all that now. I'm the old romantic. I remember when you're a wee guy, your dad would buy you shares and you think it's a big deal that you've got shares in the club. See, having the opportunity to do that again, for me, that's what we used to be like. So exactly. that's the way I want it to go back that way. I want to buy shares for my boy and all that and myself. So it's all that. It's all that kind of thing. If you want to date, date. If you don't, don't. But I think having these opportunities and doing these things now is just another step back to where we used to be and where we should be, in my Correct. opinion. Correct. Listen, mm-hmm. that's, that's what your club's always been about. Do you know what I mean? And we lost aye. that. We lost our way for a wee while there. And oh, I'm mate, delighted aye. we're now back. You know what I mean? To, to aye, being aye. something we recognise, you know? So. Exactly, man. I mean, it's like, mate, we all know what we've been through. I mean, obviously, after the admin and all that, and then the charlatans that came in, the vultures, getting up, the club was unrecognisable, man. I mean, you still paid your season ticket, we still went, but you didn't know what was happening for the Monday to the Friday with the club, you know what I mean? So, uh, at least now, do you know what? Everybody's always going to moan. You go to the iBooks, they're always going to moan. I've got a guy that sits behind me. You're one in three and all, man. He'll still moan that it's no six. You know what I mean? You can't help it. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's why they hang, man. I do, and obviously through the pandemic, I've missed that guy. Like fuck, no, I've got a guy sitting next to me that that says 
every fuck I sit in a Copeland right and every fucking right. night time game he's like that, that sun will go how can the sun not go the other way so it's no new rise? And I go, you didn't realise, mate, that it sets, it rises and sets in the same bit every day, mate. You didn't know that. You know, a bit of games, you say, I miss them. I <laughs> exactly, mate. Not that you miss all that. I just hope we can get back in this season at some capacity, you know what I mean? Aye, definitely, definitely. Um, obviously, going back to you, your your grown up, who, who was your, you know, who was the team that kind of, because obviously we've had Sunnis, we've had Walter at nine in a row, etc. So who who was the team that really gripped you? I remember, I mean, very, very, very vaguely, I remember the whole Sunnis thing. Uh, the nine in a row team, towards maybe the latter end, of it, like I'd say, like obviously Sunnis started that, but I'd say probably for Walter's kind of first kind of stint where. I, I really remember Gaza and Loudrop, do you know what I mean? Like I really remember the eight in a row. I remember being there with my dad and I remember the nine in a row, I remember Tanadice that night, how big a deal it was. Uh, so that team probably was my my first lingering memory where I go, it's easier this man, we just win everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was kinda it was that way, do you know what I mean? And then obviously as I got a bit older, that kinda came to an end. And I remember I always remember the cup final for some reason when we lost it to Hearts. And I remember I think that's when I started Call me my pals, do you know what I mean? When Advocate then came in, I remember the Shelbourne game when we were getting 3 0, we won 5 3. Me and me and my mates getting ready to go to games and gone, it's Advocate again, you're gone, we just won everything, man. Do you know what I mean? We're just uh, like, but I, I'd say that, and then, mate, I've just, I've always went, but my dad, with the 9 in a row team, that's when it really started for me. McCoy is like, he's my idol, do you know what I mean? So he was kind of, when I was younger, just everything he touched, mate, turned to gold, didn't it? It still does. And then we didn't apart from obviously when he was the manager of us, I mean, but that's kind of... See, for a guy though, mate, who's, who was always in the right place at the right time, Aye. he was in the right place at the wrong time then, I think. Although, or maybe, mm-hmm. maybe he was in the right place at the right time for us. You well, know, mate, I think of... maybe what went on in the background and what stuff that we don't know and we'll probably never know. Uh, Aye. Aye pro- I know what you mean by that, mate. It was a, it was a dream job at the wrong time, but it was maybe... The right time, eh, the right guy at the right time to kind of have somebody in there that has got the club's best interests at heart. Do you know what I mean? But again, you're always going to get focal with this. Like you mean more about McCoy when he was there, but I could never say a bad word about the guy, to be honest. No, I'm the same as you, mate. He's my hero growing Aye. up, and, and that's just, I've always loved him. And then even now, you get disappointed when you turn on the games on ITV at the Euros and it's no oh. having Clive. <laughs> oh, mate, I know. It's fucking know. John Hartson. <laughs> oh, mate, me and my mate done that mad thing where you can change the sky to like, the English version to hear <laughs> Mc- the fucking the McCoyster or night, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was going to Kevin Gallagher. R- Raman Barbwaj and Kevin Gallagher. Like, yeah, <laughs> no chance. Uh, no chance. <laughs> Nate Sunnis, I know, of course, which is huge. I know, um, exactly, I know. But uh, who, who, so McCoyster's your favourite player then, mate? How well, did, when I was younger, mate, aye. Sorry, on you go. Was it? No. How, have you, like, did you meet him when you were younger? Have you ever met McCoy? I take it you must have crossed paths at some point. Mate. Right, hold on. Hold on. Stay there. Stay there. Right. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, mate. I've played with him at Ibrox. So you man. did. So you did. So there he's there, mate. There's me and McCoy there, man. Uh, I've met him a few times. The first time that day, going to the Legends game, that was probably the point where I had any sort of proper conversation with him, he's opening line to me was, uh, so obviously I'm a height of shite mate, you know what I mean, <laughs> uh, we're walking and he was late, as he always is apparently, he was late coming in, uh, I was like, alright Ali, how you doing, and he shook my horn, he's like, ah, fuck's sake wee man, you make Willie Henderson look like Peter McCoy, <laughs> 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 so that was his opening line to me, I was like, ah, just stand there like a wee giddy school like that, <laughs> Just let them say whatever. Uh, I was like, mate, slag me all you want. Uh, <laughs> oh, I met him a couple of times and then we played another charity game. Uh, it was for St Andrews Hospice at Airdrie Stadium, the Excelsior Stadium. Uh, walked in, he's like, ah, fucking hell, man, this is a bit of fall for grace for you, we man, is it though? No? Walking in, the last time I saw him was Ibrox. And, <laughs> mate, he's just, he's one of the guys, like, I just, I think a lot of people... Because his whole cheeky, chappy demeanour and the way he carries himself, I think a lot of people forget how good a football player he was. Uh, he was actually like, see when you look back at some of the old videos, you know, you'll be the same as me probably, mate. You end up going down some sort of rabbit hole on YouTube, you watch 
you watch his last goal that the photo I've got up there, his last goal, and then you end up seeing all his goals. But mate, honestly, technically, like I think people oh, forget God. how good he was. Do you know what I mean? He was different class, man. But people say, oh, he's lucky, you know, the right place at the right times I say, but that's a skill. <laughs> I don't mean that's an art form, that's no coincidence. Aye, exactly, mate. And let's not forget, man, I mean, before my time, but my dad always used to say to me, like, he used to get fucking booed to fuck and people wanted to move this club. I mean, I don't think he had the easiest of starts at Rangers, you know what I mean? And I think even when Sunnis was there, his nickname was a judge because he was always on the bench when we signed Mo Johnston. But that, again, shows character to come back for that. And I remember sitting before that Legends game at Ibrox and me and my mate Jordan Young, we were sitting there with... I think at our table you have like lunch before you go in and Fergie was there with Bob Malcolm and then we were sitting next to Archie and Ox and a few other boys, can't remember who else, but Archie and Ox and Andy Gorham. And they were sitting going, look, what people need to remember with McCoy, he's a hard bastard. I know, you wouldn't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I can't even imagine him being in a fight. I mean, uh, there you go. Uh, it's just, I think he, <laughs> to have that kind of mental solidarity you had and the actual, to be the centre forward he was, man, he must be solid, I know, mate. And I don't uh, think... I don't think it's enough credit at times that people just think him as a really funny guy, you know what I mean? Ah, that's it, that's it, mate. Um, for, for yourself, obviously, you always wanted to be an actor, I take it. Is that what, is that what the dream uh, was? Well, I mate, I was kind of... And a fucking player, was, obviously. I, I, just, I, knew, I knew that wasn't going to happen after a million failed trial and here there and everywhere, you know what I mean? Uh, but no, mate, I was just kind of... When I, I went to school in Smithy Croft and Ridley, East End and East End of Glasgow growing up, man, I don't I didn't really know what I wanted to do, mate, do you know what I mean? And then got the chance to there was a film getting made called Rat Catcher and they were getting run all different schools and trying to get people in it. Lynn Ramsey was the director, she didn't really want to use actors as such. She wanted people just off the street to have that kind of authentic thing, the same way Ken Loach did with Sweet Sixteen, but done the thing with Ratcatcher and got the chance to audition for that, audition for it, got a wee part in it, uh, tiny part in that, but was there quite a lot and learned a lot and I kind of thought, aye, I kind of like this, mm. so just kind of, but it's not that easy, mate, to go, I like this, I'm going to, right, that's me, I'm going to be an actor, it doesn't really work that way, you know what I mean, so, uh, me and my best mate, Tam, we ended up staying in school till like six year, because then they have all the boys that we had done a trade with all sparks and plumbers and joiners and we're like, oh, fuck that man, I don't know what I'm doing with that kind of stuff, <laughs> what I mean? So I was like, so we're hanging about in school in six year doing home economics with all the birds, not any kind of like, what we did doing here, not I mean? But then when I left school, I thought, I'm going to go to college and do drama. Done that, joined a theatre group, did a few plays, then got a wee part of the Sweet 16 with Martin Compton and that, done that. Through that, met a guy who ran the theatre group, so then I'd done a few plays, and then it just snowballed for there, mate. A woman I knew came to see a play, she was a casting director, called Vicky Beatty, and she phoned me up one day, because I ended up, hated college, man. Hated it, I left that, and worked in my uncle's shop, he worked in cruise at the time in the town, so loved that, mate. 50% discount, not a gear, not that, in cruise, it was great, <laughs> so I was loving that. Then I got a phone call one day for Vicky Beatty, saying I've got an audition for you, I was like, what is it? She's like, it's a part. And a Scottish soap, it didn't have any, it wasn't called Brother City, it just called it a Scottish soap. And I was like, right, so that was the part, like Shell Soup Bob. And I'm like, are you actually having a laugh? What? <laughs> She's like, no, Shell Soup Bob. So that was it, mate. I went for the audition, got about three or four different callbacks, and then got the job, got a three month contract, and said to the boys and crews, go on and make sure my job's still here if, I, if the shit hits the fan with us. <laughs> and it was a three month contract, 19 years later, I'm still there, mate. So, so say 20 years later, you're still there. I, I know, you know I mean? still ready to go back to that job and cruise, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> it's mad, uh, it's mad this aye. when you think of how that. And, and we say about McCoy, and that being the right place at the right time, and, and obviously, aye, obviously mate. being talented as well, though, mate. And it applies to yourself because you're in the right place at the right time, but that's not good enough as being an actor. Like, you, know, you know, you've got to shine as well, and you? you've, got to, you've got to have some kind of I, I think, I think. I got a wee bit lucky, I think, at the early days because the show, when it first started, it took a good while to find its feet. And I think with the punters, my character was so easy to like because he was just this wee gallus guy swaggering about. I was only coming in now and again, so it was quite easy for the punters to take to me. Going, that's a wee guy you could, I think, punters watching it knew. They all had a shell suit bob in their street. They all had a shell suit bob in their family. So I think I was quite lucky that way to go, right, they're taking a shine to me. 
the bosses were getting a bit panicky because the show wasn't doing as well as they thought it would. People were getting a bullet left, right, and centre. But I was just turning up, going, "All right, what's happening?" No, I didn't really. I was new to the whole game, mate. So I think I was a wee bit fearless as well. Going, I'm just going to go in here and just see where it goes. You know what I mean? So I, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. Along the years, like you pick up how things work. You know what today. You know what not today. I've made a few mistakes early years where I was in that, but you learn through these mistakes. And mm -hmm. just, I'm always a great believer. Keep your mouth shut and your ears open, mate. Do you know what I mean? Go in, don't cause anybody grief there, the job and go abroad. I remember an early storyline, and it was you with the, the Asian lassie. Mm -hmm. and Zara. Marry, and Zara, and you were wanting, I think the character was wanting to marry her or whatever. And it was causing dividing the two families, right? So think about that, however many years ago that was, and then think about it now. Is it difficult for you as an actor, and, and obviously, you know, the PC Brigade, if you like, and everything changing so much in the last, well, you said 19 years. I think how much mm -hmm. the world has changed in 19 years, mate. I know, I know. There was, I, I remember that. I remember during the, the first lockdown there where we were the filming and they were putting a lot of the old episodes on. Aye. And I was watching some of them. And I, you wouldn't get away with Hoffy stuff. We did get away back then. I think a lot of that kind of, I think you can see a lot of that in like still game and stuff as well. I think yeah. when you see the episode of still game, it's quite authentic to it was right. watching it. And I think some things were ever city back in was, but times change, mate. It's like everything it's kinda like I I mean, don't get me wrong, that 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 particular storyline could still kind of hold its own now. Of, co of course, of course. Still, we've still got a big problem with racism in the world, you know what I mean? So there aye. can be a kind of thing where that could be maybe explored again with storylines in the work at the moment. But I like think the things when I done that, I mean I'm getting up my cherry picker and I'm holding a boat a buck fast and calling Dick a fanny and all that. That's that's just not gonna happen now, do you know what I mean? But do you know what I mean? It, I is, it is mental and then I'm singing Sunshine on Leaf, that wouldn't be happening now. I wouldn't be singing that. Do you know what I mean? So that was kinda of, that was I was mental times, but again mate. I was watching a lot of these episodes and I don't even remember half of that stuff. I don't remember doing it. I mean, I don't remember. I remember the cherry picking and all that stuff, but so many scenes I've done and storylines I was involved in, I go, Jesus Christ, I cannot even remember filming that. Do you know what I mean? Aye, it's mental. Aye. But that, that must be, that must be the, the weird thing watching. And I don't know, I don't know if you do watch yourself back on tell. I know some actors don't, but aye. it must be so weird looking back to some of the early stuff and going, fuck Wow, I, <laughs> mate, it was because I especially sat and watched it during that uh, last year's lockdown, and I did watch it. I made a point again because I wanted to see some of the old stuff, and I remember it was bizarre that that particular one where I was doing that storyline. I was <clears throat> nineteen then, I think nineteen or twenty, and I'm sitting watching it with my wife and my daughter and my boy, and I'm going, uh, "There's your dad, nineteen year ago." Do you know what I mean? So it's like. It, I, it was weird, mate. It was weird. It's, it's... That's what I was actually going to say as well. Is it is it is it nice to get that opportunity though, during that lockdown? I suppose if there was any positives to come for it, I suppose oh, the, mate, family, the family, the oh, family time for you aye. guys who are busy and also getting to show them, to show the kids some aye, of the early stuff for you must have been really nice. That first, see that first lockdown. That was there was times where it was hard where we didn't know what was happening wherever city and all that. So it was a wee bit stressful, but aye. a lot of it was. Amazing! It was brilliant because I I had absolute priceless time with my son and my daughter and my wife. Do you know what I mean? And we were just mm -hmm. it was the four days every day, and especially as the year went on and I went back to River City. But Panto didn't happen, and I usually do Panto every year. So right. that was the first Christmas I'd had off with my wife and Wayne's for about fifteen, sixteen years, mate. So she actually having Christmas, the build up to Christmas. Getting involved, watching all the Rangers games here Christmas. Aye. I never get to do that. Uh, beating Celtic at New Year, and I was not working, and I was pushed. It was great. <laughs> so it was, I never get the chance to do that. So it's like it was. It was. I. It was an amazing time, man. So obviously, the world wasn't having a. It, it was a horrible time. But I mean, like Aye. a personal point of view, having time with my family, it was. It was. It was great. Aye. You, you mentioned Panto. <clears throat> Aye. How hard does it, and obviously it'll lead on to rally around the Rangers as well, this, because it's relevant, but mm. how is the panel? Because that must be solid, especially at that time of year when you've said huge family time as well, and it must be Aye. solid, the amount of work you guys need to put into that. Mate, it's, there's an old saying in, in our industry, 
it's the only time an actor works hard. Honestly, mate, it really is, man. It's like it's 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 wild, man. It's two shows a day. I always put it down to kind of like like the Big Brother house, man. See, when I start there in the middle of November, I just go right. That's me here until the end of January. Do you know what I mean? That's what I always just go right. That's us. We're here. I've got fucking grade one addressing me for two months. <laughs> I just need to get through it. I just need to get through it. But I should have some laugh. Some laugh, but me. He's a money bastard. I'll tell you that. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's so easy. And he's a messy bastard. He's messy. And I'm OCD with cleanliness and tidiness. He's the opposite. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that's how we're so good pals. But no, it's 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 hard work because it's it's hard in a sense where. I miss out a lot with my veins and my wife because know that I'm saying that for people to feel sorry for me. You get paid a very <laughs> handsome wage for them panel and it's good money, so you do it because it's a good job. Yeah, the veins love they're it. Providing for them. Ah, yeah, exactly. And my, my veins, they, my veins school trip out now has got to the pavilion at Christmas, so that's Aye. magical for me because my veins get to come and see me with right. their school, plus they come and see, see me with their mom that as well. So, right. eh, my wife, no, their mom, we're still together. I'm saying their <laughs> mom, my wife. <laughs> so, stuff like that is great. But then, as I said, then it comes to Christmas Day. It's your only day off. You've right. had two shows every day, right up to Christmas. You go home Christmas Eve, you're buzzing, you get in the house and you just feel like you've been hurt by a fucking train. You sit down and you're knackered. Then you need to go up on Christmas Day and go, kid on, it's... You're feeling great when really <laughs> all you want to do is lie in your bed and watch Only Fools and Horses all day or something. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you don't want to have to go up and see all the in laws and all that shit. You're like, oh man, you sound like fucking, I don't know, man, your voice is away, you look like shite. But don't get me wrong, I love it and I love Panto. It was a wee novelty having Christmas half there, it was brilliant, but I do love it because I love the whole where, where my Panto is, is the pavilion, it's in the tune. Get that kind of Christmassy vibe about the place in Glasgow City Centre. It's just a good buzz, do you know what I mean? And I always find as well, but the panel leading up to Christmas, everybody's buzzing for Christmas. But do you find that you, you need to work at it a wee bit more after Christmas? Because I suppose the buzz of Christmas is kind of, you know, people January, mate. people are going back to work nearly. Oh, mate, Boxing Day is hard. The audience, <laughs> it, it's, it's always rammed. But it's hard because I, I just, I look at, when I'm on stage and I look out and I see all these guys with a family and I go, you know for a fact you're never going to book box day tickets again in your life because you're fucked, mate. You're knackered. They're all, they're all hungover. They're like, ah, at the time, aye, let's book it for boxing day because I'm half out of cracking. Then box day comes and they're like, oh my God, how long is this show still to go? And you're like, looking down going, mate, you still got another two hours to go, man. <laughs> and you've got a second bit at the end to come. Uh, so. and you, you're getting up and you're doing the dog shoot with me. So, <laughs> so how, would, one. how was Rally Round the Rangers though? Because I suppose it's like, like Panto in terms of it's a show on the stage. But you're singing Rangers tunes every day. You're you're in amongst your own kind, if you like, and you're having a mm. laugh with your pals on stage. You've said it, Grado. Do you know what I mean? Your pals on stage. Oh. Mate, it was right. It was. There's not there's how many Rangers shows about anymore, right? So I was like, I I think it's a good idea because we need to have some merch. There's a lot of select shows out there, and I'm going right. Yep. Uh, we done it. Seen the script, had a chat with the boss, changed a few things, gone right, do this, do that, can change a few wee things here and there. And then I thought this will be a good buzz, I thought it'll be a good laugh, not that. <clears throat> I've worked in a pavilion since 2003, right? So I've done hundreds of shows there, I've done hundreds of panels. The curtain's ready to come up, me and Grado are standing side by side. The lassies in the show, they open it with Four Lads Had a Dream. So me and Grado are still on and waiting for the curtain to come up and we get involved in the chorus. May I kid you not, I have never experienced an atmosphere like that in my life. <laughs> Mate, it was up there with the Parma game. Right? Love it. Love Mate, it. I'm no joking. The place was bouncing to the point where me and Grado are going, I'm shite myself a wee bit here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ah. He's like, so mad, but we're going, oh, mate, hell's the back of your neck. I swear to God, we came off the stage 
as if we were the fucking Rolling Stones or something. <laughs> Mate, we thought we were like fucking Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, Lennon and McCartney. We were swaggering our flat, man. That was brilliant, man. Like, at the end, we were singing all these songs, simply the best one. The place is up, it's bouncing, and we came off and we're like, this is... The dog's nuts as that. <laughs> we, f- we felt like fucking rock stars, mate. Honestly, right? It was... I've never experienced... And I, I'm just so gutted that this year it's been cancelled because see how good it was? Times that be 10 after winning the league, it would have been even better. So it's a shame, man. It's a shame. But also, obviously, is there people's name? health comes first, man. You know what I mean? But is there name, obviously, there's things... I've got tickets for things that knew them. I've been rescheduled and I've actually just got an email today for one of my show for me and the Aye. missus. So, is there Aye. any way... Because we might not get a full Ibrooks for a long time, obviously, I depending know. on what's happening. Is there any way Aye. that could come back even... I think it's been rescheduled for next summer, mate. I think he has Good. put it back Good. to next summer. So, so, let's just hope we can get 56, man, and we don't win again. Well, fucking, we've no won the league, you know what I mean? Mm. So. As you say, that's the sad part about it as well as... Aye, everybody absolutely. would have been no don't get me wrong everybody would be buzzing anyway but everybody would have been buzzing times of an hour way the, the league win and how good they Aye, were. and I think obviously with the league win with the season we had there's so much more material you can add into the actual show itself where dialogue wise things we're talking about where the show was kind of centred around us stopping Celtic doing 10 in a row which we did in the show Aye. But that is a reality now. Do you know what I mean? Right. So we can actually add in fucking, oh man, they pumped him, man, if you have a shot and target, all that kind of stuff. Right. Do you know what I mean? Stuff right. that actually happened. The four getting his goal, that's icing the cake to make it 4 1. Daft things like that. We're unbeaten all season. You can add things like that in. So we better fucking date next year or not. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so I they fucking that. pressure you. I know, mate, I know. I know. They pressure I know. you. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Exactly. I that, that, that's I suppose that's the thing for for you and it's I've always wondered especially in Glasgow especially well especially in Scotland but especially in Glasgow within Scotland how hard does it for yourself and I think you do a great job of coming across likable to both sides but still no hiding what you actually are do you know what I mean because you're Scottish celebrity you, you, everybody knows you're a Rangers <laughs> supporter but but you Aye. still there's no that way where the other side hate you if you know what I mean. Aye, mate, I kind of, <clears throat> first thing, like, when I'm when I'm on social media and I'm very vocal about being a Rangers fan and I talk, probably all I talk about on Twitter is football and Rangers, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's kind of, occasionally I'll talk about the old acting side of things, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I don't really, I just, <laughs> the day job. <laughs> I, 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 I just love football, right? I love football, I love Rangers, but what I don't, I'm no daft, do you know what I mean? I'm no stupid, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit and argue with folk about different things when it comes to like, the religion side of it, all that stuff I'm not interested in all that I mean daft things like I had somebody saying something about a guy who followed me for a long time and we spoke a lot I can't remember his name now I don't even know him you know what it's like on Twitter and that mate uh, you end up having people you know but you don't really know them do you know what I mean uh, but uh, this guy had followed me for ages and we'd, I followed him back we had a bit of banter and he was alright but just during that season there man he just took a right started what was it I can't specifically remember what it was about, but it was something about Rangers and what we sing about, and it's about Protestants and Catholics. I'm like, mate, I'm not getting involved in this. You know what I mean? He's trying to say, you try to say you, you've never been to a game and done that, mate. What is wrong with you? Do you know what I mean? I so we just, uh, I think we just unfollowed them. I was like, that's plenty. But also, about it, I'm not going to sit and talk about Selic. I'm not going to talk about Selic. I'm not going to talk about. I have a bit of banter about if they're not doing well, but I'm not really going to mention Celtic so and talk about Celtic. So I'm just going to talk about Rangers because I'm a Rangers fan, that's it. And I think too many people that are in my line of work, they're scared to talk about what they are mm-hmm. or what they are, like if they're a Rangers fan. All of a sudden, this day and age, it's not cool to be a Rangers fan at times. Right. And I'm like, I don't get that. I mean, if you're a Celtic fan, you're a Celtic fan. That's good luck to you. Talk about Celtic. I've got hundreds of my mates that are Celtic fans. Day what you back today, and I'll do what I back today. What's mm-hmm. wrong with that? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So I don't, I don't really. I've all for day one. I've been pretty vocal. Like I'm, 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 I'm a Rangers fan. I love my club. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, you're selling over city. <clears throat> it's kind of grown, you know, in, in terms of people obviously knew that are well aware of what you are and and things. Like that. I always just wonder for for people who maybe don't have a long term gig like yourself. 
that's, maybe that's the reason why they hide it. Maybe it is their fear they go into some place and they don't get the job because the route is a Rangers fan or the route is a Celtic fan. Aye. Maybe, mate, and that's, see if that is the case, that's sad. You know what I mean? That's sad. Like, totally. That's, it's, it shouldn't matter. Protestant, Catholic, Rangers fan, Celtic fan, you don't like football, you like football, you're this or that. It doesn't matter to me. See if, mm-hmm. see if I go for a, a gig in about 10 years and I don't get the job because I'm a Rangers fan or because I'm vocal about my club. Well, maybe I don't want that job, man, to work with people like that. Better it's not really, it. Aye, it's not really, that shouldn't matter. What, the only thing it should matter when you're going for a job is if you're right for it and if you're good enough to do it. That's it. Exactly. No. Exactly. So, couldn't, um, couldn't agree anymore, mate. Couldn't agree anymore. I think that's that's with football daft. Obviously, the, the podcast you're involved in um, with Grado and, and Toll and stuff like that. I think that's what's so appealing to us as, you know, punters because it is that you and Grado are obviously Rangers and, and, and Toll Celtic and you're very open about it, but you can also mm-hmm. take a step back and say, well, no, Rangers were shite today, or no, Celtic were shite today, and oh, people aye, want mate. that, do you know what I mean? People don't want aye. delusion, that's the thing. Aye, of course, mate. Like, see, I'm not going to... I've been on Football Daft and spoke about Rangers and been absolutely fucking raging and put the boot right into them and put the boot into Gerard and put the boot into Morelos, mm-hmm. whatnot. That's what you've got today, and for me, I don't enjoy it. I, I do enjoy it, but I don't want to put the boot in. I want my team mm-hmm. to be good, but I'm not daft. There's got to be times where they're shite. Right. And right. I just like talking about football. That's what I want right. to do. That's what, no, that's what me and Grado, when, when Ewan left the podcast, and it was Grado's, me were doing panel at the time, and Grado's like, do you want to date with me? And I'm, then yeah, he's texting me now. Right? <laughs> <Very cool. laughs> he's like, do you, want to, do you want to date with me? I was like, mm, I was like, mate, if we're going to do it, and he agreed as well, I was like, you kind of don't want to have a third wheel. It's probably better just one person. And there's always a double act, isn't there, where some works and twos. But this isn't going to work if it's me and him, because it's two Rangers fans. You're going Aye. to alienate so many of your punters. Folk aren't going to listen. I want Celtic fans to listen. I want to get guests on her ex-Celtic players. I want to talk about Celtic as well. I want there to be a voice there for Celtic, because I think... Something like that, it's a good platform for say like and Rangers. So I, that's how we sat down and we went, right, we need to get somebody else in. He went, we told. Now as much as me and him will clash on it a lot and he fucking rips my knitting and we don't we <laughs> argue a bit. Doesn't give a cross, good. mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's still good to have that, do you know what I mean? Of course. It's still good where I go, right, get him we we decided I to make it. Cause then it kinda Works out well, so we've got the Patreon hang on where we have a wee Celtic Daft podcast, yes. a Rangers Daft podcast. So, and it's been absolutely fantastic because we've pumped them all season. So it's well, that's, been brilliant. Mate, that's what I say to Grado. I say, you and Bob look as though you've had the, just the most amazing time Aye. on this podcast. Aye. And it comes across Aye. because you've been able to turn into him. I say, but see, in fairness Aye. to him, he hods his own. Do you know what I mean? Even wow, though it's two years, he hods oh, his he own. Does. <laughs> mate, there's, there's, there's one is really. And then there's Grado. No, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't fucking get in the dates, man. No, I mean, <laughs> be honest, man. Nah, he's fucking arse as far as splinters, man. Honestly. <laughs> no, nah, Rito, he's, he's great value, man. He's, he's, he's really good. And it's like, as I say, we clash not at times and have debates. But that's what I want. That's what I want to go at the end. Of, mate, that was a brilliant argument we had there. That was brilliant. Because that's what <laughs> folk want to hear. You don't yeah, want to totally. just come on and if everybody agrees with everybody, it's shy, it's boring. Uh, you don't uh, want that. You know what uh, I mean? You want a debate. You want I want folk going, no, mate, you've not got a clue you're talking about. Toll's right. I want that. And vice uh, versa, I want folk to go, no, he's right. Because what's the point in going on and going, oh, Christopher, you're right, mate. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, Stephen, <laughs> you're right. That's pish. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Especially so, in this city, it's not realistic either. Let's face no, it. No, exactly, it's, man. And these arguments happen daily. Really. Two cents. Aye. Folk will just go at you to their fucking tongue shit. <laughs> no, you, you mentioned Ewan as well, and I liked Ewan and Gredo doing it as well. Um, and Aye, then obviously Ewan, Ewan, Ewan left it, and well, you said there about two Rangers fans, I suppose that's the way it was when Ewan and Gredo left <laughs> it. <as> well. So <laughs> it's two Rangers fans anyway. And then, they le- and then Ewan left, and, and it was kind of like that way for a wee while where you're thinking, what way are they going to go with that? Because People, Aye. regardless of what people say about you and Cameron, people genuinely listened and watched for him as well because 
he does have that likable or no likable personality. But what I just what I was saying there about having a debate and you want that, Ewan's a master at that. He's yep, a master. Totally. That's what he he's made a career out of that, mate. He's yep. he's a gaslighting motherfucker. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he, knows, he, he knows what he's doing. Do you know what I mean? He's no uh, stupid. Totally. So that's what his game's all about. So that's how when I was taking I was like, can he just be mean grade or can he? Because no. we're not gonna really argue, we're not gonna have a debate because we're both we'll have a debate maybe in a difference of opinion about Rangers, but that's not going to work, is it? It's not really going no. to be good. So no. that's where Toll comes into the kind of bit. No, mate, Ewan's a, Ewan's a good pal, reminds me. I've known Ewan for years and ah, he's brilliant, man. He's great. Shite of FIFA, though. Isn't it? Oh. <laughs> mate, that was one of the highlights of my lockdown. That, that was so good. Oh, mate, did you see the first game? He beat me. Ah, I know, I know. Is that not like two and a half at half time? And he beat me. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck's going on here? I still think his boy was playing. Wait, he passed the pad. That was a different player, man. Because Aye. mate, you seen every game after that. I pumped him every game after that. I was like, I, wait, that that ruined my weekend that night. Oh, I, was, I, was in a, I was in a bad mood for about a week, man. Like, Falling out with the missus, not that guy. Talking to the veins, not that. I love that, man. Oh. I loved that. I loved sitting watching them because I thought to myself, Aye. "That's it." Do you know that was the that was the things actually that my missus was slagging me for because I told her about how one night she caught me sitting watching Grado's Flight Simulator and then she caught me sitting watching <laughs> you playing you playing you playing you in the FIFA and she's like, "You're not sitting watching two people playing FIFA, your man. Like, this is a big game. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot right in this." <laughs> I was I it was one out of him then one each and then we done the third week for the decider, didn't we? Aye. Yeah. Uh, absolutely annihilating of eight one or something. It was actually getting boring that one. He was he was a broken man. Ah, his boy was out that night, that's what it was, Aye, mate. I know, mate, I know. Mate, honestly, see try to get a game of FIFA with him again since then, he'll no play me. He'll no play he won't play. Because we done after that there was a mad thing where was it eSports or something? eSports done a... It was a charity thing for the NHS. All, prece- all money made went to the NHS. So it was like myself, Ewan... Uh, oh, what's the boy? Jesus, how can I remember his name? That's terrible. What's the... Oh, what's his name? He plays centre half for Hibs. Gallus as fuck. Portis. Ryan Portis, right? Ryan Portis. So you had players like that and you had... Uh, boy plays up front for Hearts as well, Northern Irish boy. How the fuck can I remember him? His name now? Oh, Liam Boyce, Liam Boyce. That's it, aye. Liam That's Boyce. It. So there was Hunter's ex pros playing, right? So it's like a group stage to begin with. So Liam Boyce, a lassie who put it's no sexist at all, can of running. <laughs> lassie plays for Man City and Ryan Porteous, right? And I was in a group with, with A3. Hume was in another group. So I played the first game, Liam Boyce absolutely fucking spanked me about 6-2 or something right 5-1 something like that right destroyed me we'll say 5-1 we don't actually 6-2 right? no, right. no, horrible right. fucking score horrible was like, it wasn't 6-2 right? so he hammered me and I thought oh my god I, f- I think I'm good at FIFA right I'm like oh my god this guy's like different class so then I played the last eight plays for Man City next I beat her so I was back in it but my decider was against Ryan Porteous because he had done the same as me Liam Boyce had bet him and they bet the last it plays for Man City, so it's between me and uh-huh. him. It goes through. And obviously, we all know the hang with Rangers and Hibs now. It's becoming a kind of I'm like. <laughs> so I'm getting the boys running commentary on this. Like, the more I'm playing this fine portis, they're like, ah, you need to fucking. I'm like, no, I know. I'm like, no, right? The weight of the club's so, on you now. <laughs> aye, aye. So we, we kicked half, mate, right? Sorry if I'm bleeding on, just tell me to shut up here. No, 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 when you go, on, you go. It's great, mate. So uh, we, we kicked half. He's went one nil up. Right, and he's quite fucking good at it, right? You know, all these kind of, me, I'm nearly 40, right? I'm sitting playing FIFA, right? <laughs> these wee guys are fucking, that's what they fucking train and play FIFA, that's what it is, right? Well, I was going to say, mate, they right? train in the morning for a couple I, of hours and then that's him for the rest of the day, so. FIFA, I know, right? <laughs> so I'm playing, and he's got his pure, ah, hey, hey, what's happening? I'm like, oh, you fuck, oh, you know, like, right, right, bye. So I'm thinking, getting it for Morelos, you know that, mate, right? I'm sitting going, I need to be in, right? So, makes it one each, right? I like right one each and I've got him on the ropes a wee bit then he's got me in the ropes it's back and forth back and forth 90th minute I scored man <laughs> I swear to God right so I'm like ah, 
Hey, do you really rain it in? Nah, fuck it, get up, you ass! <laughs> fucking grab me up! And he's like, he's sitting there going, I can't fucking believe that. <laughs> I'm like, try to, try to get back to being nice. Oh, aye, I know, mate. Good game, mate. All the best, buddy, right? Camera oh, picks him up. Fucking ass, man! <laughs> Your voice note in the boys, I beat him, Nora! <laughs> the, 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 the draw gets made, and I'm playing Ewan in the <sighs> quarterfinals, right? So it goes straight for the group stage to the quarterfinals, right? Mate, you and Cameron, he's sending me daily updates. You can't, you, you'll not be able to beat me, Stevie. No, he calls me Bob as well. Look at this. I am now officially one of the best players in the world. Eh? Look at me now. I'm, I'm in Division 1 on online seasons. He's sending me videos. I play a very rigid, rigid touch and go system. He's into the tax. I'm like, fucking shut up. Right? Go, so, mate. We're playing, right? We plays. He's fucking, mate. He's. The confidence is ripping at him, right? Because he's been... Mate, He after I beat him in that thing that you watched, he uh, battered FIFA. I mean, battered it, right? Like, <laughs> non-stop, right? So, I know, I'm thinking, he has got maybe a bit better at it, right? So, I'm Liverpool. He's he's Liverpool, and I'm Liverpool. So, both of us are going Liverpool, right? He's slagging me, right? He goes one nil up and he's giving it big licks, blah blah blah, big licks, going off his nut, and he's annoying when he gets away. He gets in your head, right? You need to fucking blank it out, right? <laughs> so I equalised, and it was the same as the Porteous game, mate. And he's seeing we're doing the lineups because he's Liverpool, and I'm Liverpool. He's like, "What are you playing Jordan Henderson for? Jordan <laughs> fucking Henderson!" So I played him sitting, right? I played him sitting, but like, I'm playing him. Who scores a winner in the 90th minute for me? <laughs> Couldn't he write it? Jordan Henderson, I curled it right into the tap bin. Oh my god. Oh, mate, honestly. Absolutely love it, man. Then a wee guy for Ross County pumped me in the semi finals, man. <laughs> Listen, you beat Edinburgh. That sort of fucking matters yeah, for the Glasgow one. Ban it for my relax, man. <laughs> but yeah, I bet you Portis was up there celebrating every tackle he got against you, you know? oh, and all. He's mate, up there getting really. it. He was. Mate, he just looked. He, he was just. He had. Sitting there with his Yeezys on, his hair slicked back, and all that. I'm like, ah, oh, I need to beat this guy. I'm sitting there, I'm barely hanging out, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Professional <laughs> pride. <laughs> they, but see the things, though, they, they things are what relate to, to us, though, as well, because we've all been there Aye. playing your pals, and do you know what I mean? And that's oh, the. Oh, mate. That's and the that, funny mate, I'm, I, Matt, that's what my wife always says that. My wee boy's getting that way, and he's only fucking. He's just coming up for six, mate. It's terrible. <laughs> So competitive, mate. I need to win at everything. It's terrible, man. It's so bad. It's like it's like an illness almost. You know what I mean? It's so bad, man. That's a range of No mate. way was Ryan Portis beating me at FIFA. Not a chance, no. mate. Not no. A chance. No, that, listen, the, the, as I said, the weight of the club's on you when you're playing one of them tonight. Mate, it's 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 so bad, like, I had all that in my head, I was going, I'm doing this for my club. <laughs> this is <laughs> my club now. <laughs> I, know. I know. I'm hanging the fucking the cup final, man. I'm doing, I'm hanging the all sorts, I'm going, I cannot use no beat me. <laughs> Mate, I don't really play online much now, right, but I remember oh, when I did, and it was this wee boy for doing South, and obviously, being Rangers fans, you want to go Rangers, but you know, if I go Rangers... All these cunts are going by Munich and all that, you're getting absolutely ah, horse. Doesn't it matter? Ah, so, of so, so, so he went to Leeds and Leeds were in League One at the time and I went off. If he's gone Leeds, I'm fucking going my club, man. I'll, I'll do it. Aye. But went I Rangers. Went, went, <laughs> went Rangers, mate. He jumped out and must have thought, yes, he went Celtic. And I went, oh, don't fucking, that's it. It's on now, son. And just like you're saying, mate. I hardly touched the ball the first half. <laughs> and it, it, it beat me, beat me, it was beating me one nothing. I eventually got back and I won 2 1, and I celebrated it like it was a Rangers goal at the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> so, you're pressing I, the record thing on your support, <laughs> keep the image and all that, you score, the wee video, send it to all your mates, man. I've got, I've got two wins on the record, and I'm sending videos that need to be my but as you say though, you think to yourself, I'm doing this for my fucking club now. Oh, That's the I thing. Mean, it's pride mean. involved in it. <laughs> it's nuts. It's nuts. <laughs> uh, obviously, 2018, mate, Gerard comes in. Aye. Huge buzz. Huge buzz about the club. We're finally where we've been, which has been well documented, but, you, you know, we're, we didn't know if we'd have a club. Never mind what kind of club we would have. No. What no, was your no. first thoughts when you heard about Gerard being linked to the job? Eh. Uh, <laughs> Mate, I can't lie, man. I, I, wasn't, I was like, ah, no. I was like, because ah, I just thought, 
he's not done anything in management. I thought, is it the right way to go? And I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I was buzzing. Aye. It's terrible because I, I think I tweeted something at the time saying, no way we're linked with Gerard now because at that point you were linked with everybody and their granny. Do you know what I mean? Aye. And I was like, but when he did come and I seen that first interview, the euphoria kicked in, man. I, I was fully invested. I was, he, and he still does to this day, he carries himself yes. he's the way a Rangers manager of the past, like your Walter Smith, your Sunnis, even your McLeishies, all mm-hmm. that. He had that, where you're going, this guy, he's, and I think it's very prominent now when you see him now, it's very at the forefront. Right. He's always got the club at the forefront, he's gone the way this club should be. And I've been to a few games, sound like a wanker, right? But in the director's books a few times, right? And I've spoke to Colin Stewart and that, and he always tells me, he says, when he came in, he changed this, he changed that, he wanted this, he wanted that, done at the training run in the stadium. Every with him, the word that always comes to mind with him is just standards. Yeah. It's kind of. And he's made mistakes, man. I mean, don't get me wrong, before that fucking first lockdown kicked in, that night at Ten Castle, I thought, can we get any lower, man? Can things get any worse? Obviously, things had been a lot worse than that before he even uh, came, but I mean, it's a football side of you going, where uh, is this gone? And I think the whole pandemic and the shutdown of fixtures and football and Celtic getting haunted that fucking ninth title, I think... Was that a good thing for us? Aye, I think it was. I think it really came at the right time for Gerard. By aye, me. aye, I think it just made Gerard go away and we evaluate things. And I can imagine him and Bill and Cole Shaw and McAllister all sitting down going, Right, what are we doing here? What's happening? Because you better believe, man, he loves this club now. He loves yeah. this club. He's a Liverpool fan, he's a Liverpool man, he's a Liverpool legend. But Rangers, no matter where he goes, when he will eventually go at some point. He will always be a Rangers fan as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he just ate the standards, and I couldn't be happier for like obviously every Rangers fan under the sun and what we done last year, getting the title back. But for him personally, I think I you've showed a lot of people there what you made him. Do you know what I mean? Aye, aye. Well, I mean there was still some some sniping within the Rangers support that I mean even when you got the cup to to Saint Man. Obviously, that last year there, uh, and there's still this thing, uh, still bottom it, and still this, still that. Aye. But I think you can see in Europe when it, you know, Gerard, I think, and by the way, know that we should, I'm not saying for a minute that he puts the cups to one side, because I don't believe he does, and I think the cup things hurt him a lot this year, and I think he'll get back to, I think this this season, when it's coming, I think you'll see Gerard now try and go for the cups because he really, it's hurting him that. But I think you've seen in Europe and in the league this year where he put his focus and his priority. Imagine a world with no cold calling. A world where companies don't sell your data to other companies who want to pester you. At G4 Claims, we don't cold call and we don't buy a single lead from data companies. Oh, and if you're due any compensation from your car accident, you pay nothing to us at all. For full accident management support, including motor replacement, repairs and personal injury compensation claims, just search G4 Claims today for help the way you want it. So, so do you think yourself that the, the obviously the cup situation, Gerard? Don't get me wrong, mate. If, if you turn to me and say to Rangers fan, listen, you get the two cups next year and all, but you win the league. I think we would all take it. But aye, you, you, you want to win everything, didn't you? Really, because we're greedy like that. Aye, mate. I think. Don't get me wrong, right? Me, and my, me, and my mate were talking about this all night watching the Scotland England game, right? It's he said it himself in an interview at Ibrox and Trophy Day. I think it was. Uh, it still doesn't sit right with him. And it doesn't, I mean, I, if somebody said to us at the start of the season, especially such a monumental season it was, us going for 55, them going for their 10, you're going, we need, they can't do the tip, we need to win this league. So much pressure on us. And today, in the way we did, no losing a league game all season, you'd have bought the Honol fat yes. and dominating them every time we played them. We had nobody able to beat us. But, if somebody says to you, they'll be out both domestic cup competitions as well, you will put them out, one of them, and they'll be out the other one. <laughs> You're thinking, it's a treble, a double at the very least. Aye. So, the manner, I, the Johnson game at Ibrox, I think for the first fucking 15 minutes, you could see the writing on the wall, watching Aye. that. 
We won the at the races. The intensity wasn't there. On and after the ball, we couldn't really deal with it, Johnson. They were, they, were, they were pressing everything. You were waiting on them tiring. They didn't tire. You were waiting on us having a bit of magic. It didn't come. And then how the fuck nobody picks up a high-vis goalie in the middle of the fucking box? <laughs> Honestly, he's wearing high-vis, mate, and nobody picks him up. You know what I mean? But fair play to them. They, they deserved it on the night, at Johnson. And the same could be said probably with St Mirren and the League Cup, man. They, they were up for it. And you can't, you can't go into these games. And as much as you're better than them, you still need to earn the right to show you're better than them. And if Aye. a team works hard and comes right at you, you need to have the tools to stand up to that. And more times than not, we did this season, but the twice we didn't. It cost us. It, it's fatal because gone for such an unbelievable season that we had, it it sounds mental saying it, but it could have been better. Aye. Could have been, mate. Yeah. And that's, but I think that's also a good thing because I think <laughs> it's something that will keep Gerard hungry and, and with the Champions Aye. League carrot this year as well, it will keep him Aye. hungry. And, and again, we don't know, obviously, sitting here, the new, what, near enough getting to the end of June, we don't know who will come back for pre-season, who will be moved on. So, for, for, for us, it's, it's all about, if you're moving, it's talking Morelos and Porto and things like that, and if that's going to come to fruition, no MD wants to see it, but I think we're all, we all know where we were, and we know that this is the way Rangers is going to have to be now, that we bring players in, you know, low low fees, if you like, and then sell them on, hopefully for huge fees after they've, they've done amazing at the club. It's all about aye. being able to find the next Morelos and keep Gerrard's, you know, keep him turned on for one, a better word, you know what I mean? Aye, mate, it is because let's not kid ourselves, man. Celtic have done unbelievable business with players, but see the transfer mm-hmm. fees, yep. see your Wanyamas and whatever, bringing them in, making fortunes on them. We need to get back doing that and see if we make a good amount of dough on your Morelos, your Camaras, your Barisic, whatever, even. I mean, Kent, Hollanda, there's so many, we've got so many assets there in the team. Yep. That's what we need today. And then you add into the mix, we get into the Champions League, you've went full circle. Yep. You're back operating at a level we were opera- operating at before. But obviously when we're doing that in future now, we make sure we're doing it right and we look right. after the money and we don't, we live within our means. And that's what we need today. I mean... Nobody wants to see Morelos go, nobody wants to see Ryan Kent go, nobody wants to see Kamara go, but it's a business. It, it it needs to work and function as a business, so we need to, make, like you say, we need to find the next Morelos for fucking Helsinki, you need to find the next Kamara for 50 grand, which I don't think you're going to get a player like Kamara for 50 grand ever again, but <laughs> that's going to be like... That's the best bit of business ever, I think. No, I don't know. So, right there when you watch them, man. <laughs> it's mental. But it's the start of reality, man, that we need to replace the players. And we will. Right. That's the thing. Nate's big on the club. Nate's, Nate's invincible. You know what I mean? So it's going to be just the way it is. Well, see, just looking, you can obviously see Loudrup, Gascoigne, Ferguson, McCoist, even Walter aye. behind you there. Aye, aye. Every one of them's left their club and our club's still standing and we're still champions as we speak. Exactly, so that's what we have mate. to keep anyway. Exactly. Hands, you know what I mean? So. Exactly, man. Exactly. That's the way we've always been, mate. It's got to be done. Right, I say to you before we came on that we, that we were going to try and every guest we've owned this year to try and do a kind of best 11, if you like, that you know you've played with you've, or, or you've grew up watching or whatever. So I did say you, so are you, formation wise, how you split up actors, players, whatever it does, they matter, and obviously whoever, whatever manager you would pick. I don't know if, because obviously you're a busy man, so I don't know if you would, you would time to do it, mate. But have you any wee kind of thoughts about it? Right, I'll have a think about it. Now, right, I've got right. I'll add some comedy value into it as well, right, mate. Right, okay. Right, in goals, I'm going Graham Stevely, aka Grado, right? <laughs> or as Walter calls him Grado. Ah, Grado. <laughs> He tells me every fucking time that he was a goalie and he was younger and he was a brilliant goalie, right? So he's going in goals. Uh, right, so I'm going to mix, right, mix it in with ex Rangers players and people I've worked with, you're saying, aye? A- M, do you want me, aye? Right, uh, right back. <clears throat> I'll put my good mate Jordan Young in there, right? Because he's fit as fuck. He's one of the fittest fucking 40 year old guys I've ever met in my life, <laughs> right? Listen, he stop running. Just runs up and down constantly. Out running fucking stands me hands makes me feel absolutely ashamed of myself. Right? Because he's just fit as fuck. He's in there right back. If anybody gets by him, mate, I know he'll just 
He'll do him in or something, you know. Aye, <laughs> and his family will, so. Exactly, man. <laughs> Aye. He's just a shite Lenny Murdoch work, mate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right, he's in there at right back. Eh, go on, go I'll go 4-4-2, right? Old school, old school. Two centre-offs. Eh, I'm going to go... I'm going to go Richard Goff. And I'm going to go... Next to him... Aye, it's... <sighs> Do you know what, man? I love, I loved Davy Weir. I loved him. See when he came in, man, it was like a pure stopgap, and the guy took us to European finals, and I loved him. Mate, oh. he was he was one of the ones that I've done. I've had on this podcast where I've been like in awe looking at him. Aye, and and, and the camera, mate. And people don't know this, but the feed cut out about four times, and he was so patient, and I'm sitting going. He's going to fucking hate me, man. And I'm pure panicking and off flustered. Him, Kenny Miller, and Graham Roberts are the three mate that I've been like, holy fuck. Aye, mate. Do you know what I mean? So I, I get what you're saying with David Weir. Aye. David Weir, and he, when I think he David Weir, I think he what he coming back. I think him and Big Ugo were the two first players he signed when he came back. Because, mm. you know what? He, the foundations are built from the back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it, just, it, it reminds me of happy times. Uh, it just reminds me winning the league at Tannadice, winning the league at Rugby Park. It just reminds me getting to the UEFA Cup final. It's just so many good memories. So he's in there for that. So that's Grado, Jordan Young, <laughs> uh, Goff, and David Weir. But and the fucking the Dutch master left back for me, man, is Arthur Newman, right? He's in there. Yeah. David Robertson is no far behind him, to be fair. But so I just, Arthur Newman, man, I just I think. Total class, man. Just like absolute. Probably couldn't he sign a player like that now, because it would be too much money. Yeah. He was what he was up there as maybe world class. I think we a lot of other players we signed at that time. Yeah, right in the middle of the part. I'm trying to think of actors, not and all, man. I'm trying to think of right in the middle. <laughs> I'm going to. I don't think any other actors are going to make this now, mate. I think it's all. <laughs> it's all serious, man. Great old job for all the two that are in there. Uh, I'm going to go my two centre mids are Barry Ferguson and Gaza right they two are in there Fergie I didn't Fergie hear hint about by the way eh that doesn't bear hint about I know a midfield like that I know they, <laughs> Fergie for me like you asked me earlier on who when I was growing up McCoy's was my idol but as I got on a wee bit and started going to the games with my mates not that Barry Ferguson was like he's one that I've played it a couple of charity games where I've met a few times and the way you're talking about Davey Weir there I'm quite when I meet Barry still to this day I've met him hundreds of times now, but I still go at that I'm far right mate it's happening it's like I forgot I've, I've lost the fucking power to blink and I was like ah, you're right my die yeah, honestly man he's like he's a aye he's a going Gaza fuck Gaza just did no bad as well didn't he you know what I mean so it's kind of and we saw the best of him I always say this we saw the best of him we did, we did. Again, like I'm saying there with Newman, you couldn't sign up well at now. He was world class. Uh, either side of the two, I'm going Alberts on the left and Loudrop on the right. Uh, Loudrop, oh, just again, world class. I keep saying the two words world class, uh, but he was. We probably seen the best of him, I know, I would say. Because uh, uh, when he went to Chelsea, man, it was, I think he would maybe admit it was. Didn't he work right. out for him, you know what I mean? But he was phenomenal. And then Alberts, man, he was like, just used to love how much he would just score against Celtic, honestly. Right. Right. Uh, and, and became Glaswegian, basically, as well, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> just one of the foreigners that came and, like, loud drop and, like, so many foreigners that's came here the years, like, players like, I don't know, even, like, fucking... Carlos Cuella or stuff like that they've come here and they've just embraced what the club's about and they're invested in it 100% and aye that was it man he was just in I think you know who the two I'm going to say up front mate <laughs> so I think I've ever got a better front two in my life ever than McCoy's and Haley do you know what I mean yeah, I think it'd no. be a lot of people's front two I think to be fair aye I mean it's kind of a thing of the past now that's quite old school isn't it? having a partnership up front it doesn't really happen in modern day football now but Right. Then, like the other, just the other day, there I was sitting. I watched the uh, highlights on YouTube of the Leeds game, uh, both games, and especially Aaron Road, man. When you see 
the way Bomber Brown breaks it up with Cantona, kind of just through Cantona. I think the ball goes to some. I think it's Durant kind of plays it out to Haley. And then the white Haley just the ball, in. Man, the ball in. <laughs> and you actually see quite a lot of the Leafs fans clapping after it. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, no clue, but was there a better front two in the world at that point in time? I don't know, man. I don't know. And they okay. should have won that tournament. You know what I mean? They should okay. have won that. But I, so that's my teammate. I flung Jordan and Grado in there. You know what I mean? But I'm surprised they put your cell in. I know, I know. But <laughs> Jordan and Grado weren't there in it. Right back's a tough one for me. I don't mm-hmm. know. Right back would be. I've always, I was always a fan of Aaron Hutton just before he went to, even before he went to Spurs. And Hutton's the one that good. probably springs to mind, doesn't it? Aye, then obviously the goalie. There's an argument the goalie or McGregor. I was going to say the goalie or Grado there. <laughs> <laughs> the goalie would be a Grado, you know what I mean? To, I don't know. I don't know. I thought he said towards Gordon, I think. <laughs> we don't know that's my team anyway mate there we go Brilliant. manager a, manager it's Walter got to be the man isn't it it's aye, got to be the man definitely. it's got to be aye definitely mate we're kind of getting to the end because I know you're a busy man and I appreciate you, you, you taking the time out to, to speak to us and, anything you know, by the time this goes out you'll have been on the Wales Corner hopefully so I hope that you enjoy you enjoy the own that <laughs> mate, cheers thank you cheers, cheers bye bye bye, bye. bye. bye.